All right. Hello? Hello, Joe. Hey, Cy, how are you? Okay. Cy, uh, we're over here in the president's office, Clark Clifford and Abe and myself, uh, and uh, the president and uh, Harry McPherson. We've been talking about this veto message. Yep. The, uh, we've just talked at length to Ramsey Clark and asked him to uh, produce a legal opinion declaring the provision unconstitutional and also uh, a veto message with some jazz to it that would uh, explain why why it was unconstitutional in very popular terms. And uh, maybe Clark might start by spinning out some of his ideas. Okay. Talk about it. Hello, Cy. Hello, Clark. Um, I was just telling our group here that we're a little disadvantaged by not having had the opportunity of reading the committee reports and all. But as we look at some of the language in the bill, I wondered whether or not this might be an argument against the bill. It talks in there about the president not being permitted to move uh, a, a military installation uh, unless the matter is placed before the Congress and they get from January to May or something of that kind in which they uh, have the right to consider it. Yeah, is well, they, it's late before them in the reporting sense, Clark. Yeah, but the thought occurred to us, and you would know, is there any merit to such a contention as this, as we were spinning theories? Suppose that it's in the month of June. Yeah. Suppose that our intelligence gives us the information that we can expect a nuclear attack on the SAC base at Omaha. Uh -huh. Now, does that mean that the president cannot uh, immediately move that entire installation because of the threat of, uh, of uh, destruction? And uh, must, must he then send the matter up there? Does that mean that he has to wait until the next January? We're thinking of rather extreme instances which would show the uh, lack of wisdom of the bill, Cy, and what constitutes what seems to us to be such um, a direct invasion of the presidential power and responsibility. Now, would there be some merit to an argument of this kind? Clark, I'd have to check the language of the committee report, which I do not have before me, but I do not think it purports to cover the type of situation which you have just outlined. But uh, I can't be certain without the language in front of me. But it, see, in it, uh, there, there is language there that we've discussed. Yeah. It, it is just not the fact of the abandonment of a base. It isn't just the real estate question involved. There is some other language in there that has something to do with the operation. Substantial reduction of the mission. Uh, this is Abe. Uh, hi, Abe. Uh, hi. I, as I say, Abe, I don't have the language in front of me here. As I recalled it, however, I thought the Congress was trying to make it clear that on operational matters, they were not seeking to intervene, but in non-operational matters, they wanted the matter laid before them during the period of X to Y. There, there is an exception for uh, tactical measures. They, they use the word tactical, which yep. of course is a lot narrower than operational. Well, as I say, Abe, I don't have the language in front of me right now. Uh, I can get it if you want and uh, and talk about it with you. Uh, yeah. Our view, when we looked at it uh, through the general counsel's office, was that it did not cover the uh, the type of situation that Clark was referring to. Well, I uh, think perhaps it could be placed in that context. However, I think it'd be a good idea to get it uh, and take a look at it and let's talk about it, huh? All right, let me uh, go back to the Pentagon, and I'll call you from back there when I get over there. Yes, yeah, sorry, we were planning on, uh, Ramsey is right, again. we were planning on having a meeting tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. over here. Tomorrow is the last day. Yeah, Ramsey's got a call in for me, which I've got uh, 
I'm sure it's on this subject. Hell, pending this thing. Well, let me get in the car and go back on over to the Pentagon. I hold on. The president wants to talk to you. I know. But I know. Sir. Yes, sir. I talked to Russell at some length about this last night with uh, Lee White. I talked to Katzenbach two or three times in the last two or three days. Uh, Russell, uh, of course, is not going to support us. He is inclined, though, to think that uh, we're right and there's a good deal of merit in this. Uh -huh. He thinks if we, if we let this go through unchallenged, first we're hypocritical because we vetoed a bill two months ago on the same basis, the same thing in point. Uh, on Northwest uh, Relief, yeah. just involved a couple of states. But uh, I have tried to uh, uh, to read what I could without any legal background, and I believe that a very strong argument can be made that you are circumscribing, circumventing, and uh, uh, handcuffing and straightjacking the commander-in-chief because of the period the big point that I see is that these boys uh, uh, and Rivers is desire to get McNamara and me and everybody else uh, he has picked out January to April that's right and uh, if something happens after May that required a commander in chief to show any in, any flexibility, whatever. He can't change the calendar. He couldn't call a special session and say, "I'll call, uh, I'll call uh, next January, June," because it's just not June. It's January. So the president is uh, frozen. And he just has to wait until a goddamn calendar comes around the next January. Now, when you're dealing with the Soviets, it's not going to wait on that. The Chinese are not going to wait on that. And the, even the Vietnamese tonight don't wait on that. And uh, so let's just assume for a moment that, uh, that we got word that they were going to attack uh, the SAC base and we ought to move all of our equipment and all of our facilities and all of our uh, uh, personnel from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, or Omaha, Nebraska. Uh -huh. And let's assume we got that word May the 15th. Uh, I think that resolution would require you to submit to the committee between January and April your plan to, to move it because it involved over 250 men. And uh, uh, I think if they would have to from January of next year till May of next year, decide. And if it doesn't say that, it can be made to appear to say that, and I think it does. And I think that we ought to have, if we've got a damn bit of imagination, and I'm shocked that we, that we don't have any more than we have. I've been debating this thing three days, and I just had a, uh, 60 days in a night school, law school. I hate like hell to have to talk about what's constitutional with you come loudy boys. <laughs> uh, and it seems to me, if I had to move out of Omaha or Bergstrom, wherever it is, that that would involve the closing of a base. Why in the hell you fellas can't see that and why you yield? This fellow Rivers has got your britches and your pocketbook, and he makes us look like school children. Mr. President, we didn't want to put you in a spot in this. Well, we uh, felt that... I'm in a spot. You haven't got any choice about that, sweetheart. I'm done there. It's on my desk, and i got to sign it, and i just got 12 hours to do it. Right. And um, uh, the Attorney General's at Martha's Vineyard, and the stuff I've got here is the biggest bunch of crap I've looked at since I left Mexican school, where I used to teach. It just, uh, there's no argument here for a veto message in this thing I've seen. I wish you'd look at it. I will, Mr. And President. I agree. I think on the basis of what I saw earlier tonight, there is not a case. But let me go back to the office and take a look at it and see if we can come up with one, because I don't think there's one on the basis of what I've seen so far. Well, I think it, from what I saw of their act, there's a strong case. Mm. Because I think if you don't stop this, 
I think every public health hospital, they've already got it on HEW, every agricultural research station, every immigration station and justice, every agriculture thing you've got. It'll just go all over the board, and I'm a eunuch instead of president. There's yep. no presidents anymore, and you all have just uh, uh, let it go by because General Rivers is firing on Fort Sumter. Well, we want to do that, Mr. President. Okay. All right. And uh, let me get at it. You get all the brains you all got and all these cum loudies that you've been recommending over there that I've been approving blindly uh, from... Uh, Not blindly, Mr. President. Well, I have. Hell, I have. You and Bob McNamara come in here with 18 and say this guy is it and, and so on and so forth, and I don't even know what he looks like, and I just approve him in blank. And uh, so you get him busy tonight, and let's get something in the morning that uh, get your teeth in. Otherwise, I'm going to get A.W. Morrison up here from Johnson City. And he has to quit plowing for a couple of days, but I'll tell you that, he can give me a reason. Right, sir, I'll get right at it. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, the other problem is the military, how, how much this inhibits military activity, the thing we discussed earlier. Yeah. I think is relevant. Mm-hmm. I'll get at it right away, Joe. I think Ramsey is in his office. So All right, thanks. Yeah. Right, bye. Ramsey, you just Wait. 